and welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Bright alongside Melissa McFerrin and Coach. Haven't seen you since uh, we wrapped up the season over in Fayetteville on the, the WNIT. Uh, so a chance for us to kind of recap the year. This year, uh, a lot of newcomers on the team uh, had some early injuries in the season, but you make a postseason uh, again. So I know that was big for this program. Well, I tell you what, Jeff, if you look at our, who we lost last year, there were a lot of people that were looking at our team going, how good can we really be? And of course, we were relying heavily on young players. Of course, Mariah Rouser goes down early, and that was a big blow to us. Then Kesey gets the injury. But if you look at our team right now from where we started the beginning of the year with eight newcomers, and a few question marks in terms of who was going to produce and, and what our team might look like. I think it was a really um, great ending that our team accepted that WNIT bid. Certainly, I'm, I'm not going to veil this. Our, our goal is the NCAA tournament, but um, with as much youth and as much new as we had, I'm, I'm actually very proud of this team um, for what they were able to accomplish throughout the course of the season. You had a lot of uh, contributions from your freshmen. Of course, Ariel Hearn, multiple freshman of the week honors. Uh, Asiana Fuqua Bay uh, was a freshman of the week. Uh, Jamie Jackson came in there and, and started to fill that role that, uh, that AQ had the last couple of years as the defensive stopper. So your freshman class made an immediate impact. Our freshman class was a top 40 class in the country, and that really was the class, of course, before we knew that we were changing conferences. That was the class that we decided to uh, begin to build around. And certainly that will be the case now, even going into the American Athletic Conference. But they did not disappoint, other than the fact that we didn't get to see Mariah throughout the course mm -hmm. of the year. And she is um, so explosive and, and such an efficient scorer and a great lane runner in transition and just a very, very committed defender. But of course that gave um, Ariel Hearn an opportunity to shine, which she certainly did. It's pretty amazing when you can put a freshman in the role of a play call in late game situations. And I, I go back to maybe a Southern Miss game mm -hmm. where really Ariel scores 10 of the last 12 points and ends up being the difference in the game. And then of course, Jamie Jackson and Asiana Fuqua Bay, just very, very solid, will continue to grow into their offensive games, but um, pretty good young freshmen. Well, and those are, that's a class that, that you needed to get a lot of minutes. They were gonna get a lot of minutes, they progressed mm -hmm. Because as you look toward next year, you're going to have to rely on a sophomore class and a redshirt freshman, Mariah Rouser, a lot. We'll talk about some recruits in a minute, but Bill Keese, Abdul Qadir, KK Harvey are going to go ahead and graduate. And so there are going to be some upperclassmen that won't be on the team next year. That's exactly right. And, and, and with Kesey in particular, her initial reaction was, yes, let me come back, but she's going to get her degree. And then I think beyond that, it was like, no, let me go ahead and go into PT school or PA school. And then ultimately she's decided she's gonna graduate um, and then transfer and perhaps play that fifth year. KK Harvey will graduate at the end of the summer and move on into her professional life. So certainly we wish them well, um, but with Kesey in particular, it, it, it takes a senior starter off of our team. We'll now move Ariel Hearn probably back to her natural position as a point, but still use her as a scorer. And then certainly we'll st we're still recruiting now to try to uh, fill in a, a guard into our current roster. And there always seems to be that diamond in the rough that's still hanging around that you can pick up this late in the year in the recruiting season. Well, we've been very active um, in junior college recruiting. We have had several players on campus, very, very high level players. Um, it would be great to say we bat a thousand and, and, and end up exactly with the one or two players that we want, but it's pretty hotly contested. Uh, the players that are available right now are are very, very valuable to a lot of teams. So uh, we'll go deep into the recruiting season, but I think we'll end up with a player or two that are gonna impact our team. Now in the off season, uh, the biggest update will be uh, how are the facilities coming along? Because I guess the strength and conditioning facility and the training facility are, are nearing the end of that project and they'll be about ready to, to open up here pretty soon. Very much so. Uh, for the, just as a catch up, we began phase one of the renovation in the field house about three years ago, finished it two years ago, and now it's been really two years of planning, um, demolition and renovation building to complete the second phase, but we're within a month of that project being finished. Even though the general public never sees this, um, as they walk in the front door of the field house to the right hand side, they, they will see the renovated locker room area, but now two levels below that, or the immediate level below it, and then a level below that, we now are beginning to open a brand new weight room, um, cardio area, training room area, complete with hydrotherapy pools for rehab, and really just a full service complex for the health uh, training and well-being of our student-athletes. 
It's amazing. I got to walk down there a couple of weeks ago. Mike Jenkins took me down mm -hmm. there. It's amazing how much space is down there at the old racquetball courts. Absolutely. And, and for those people that have been in the Elmeron Fieldhouse for years and years, we actually took three full racquetball courts to become our weight room. So that is the what we affectionately are calling the pit because we don't know <laughs> what else to call it right now. But then we have uh, certainly acquired a, a lot of additional space compared to what we had previously for a beautiful cardio area, um, training room area, hydrotherapy pool area, treatment area, um, cardio deck that will, that will have um, six treadmills, complete with audio visual for certainly for our players, but also for recruiting in the sound system and all the wonderful perks that um, are becoming so important in recruiting these days. Well, Coach, let's touch on the, the future of women's basketball at the University of Memphis, American Athletic Conference next year. You found out you're going to play uh, 18 games in that league and you're going to have the two teams that played for the national championship on that schedule. Absolutely. When we get our American Athletic Conference schedule, we will host UConn as well as play them away. We will host Louisville as well as play them away. And those are the two teams that we saw vying for a national championship. In addition to that, we will also have Cincinnati, Rutgers, Temple, and South Florida that are coming um, from other leagues. And then in addition to that, three teams that we're very familiar with, Houston, SMU, and Central Florida. And, and quite honestly, Jeff, this year, our league in Conference USA was probably the seventh or eighth best conference in the country. As we add those new teams, or as we all come together into a new league, I would likely say that we're now going to move into probably number four or five mm -hmm. in terms of competitive strength of our new conference. Well, with home games against UConn and Louisville, uh, your, your season ticket sales ought to be pretty, pretty stout next year. Absolutely, and we're in ongoing negotiations with the FedEx Forum to, to make sure that we have a place to, to play those games because I don't know that 2,500 seats in the field house is going to be enough. At least that's what we hope. But it's a really exciting time. The growth of women's basketball right now is just phenomenal. And whenever you have those types of team coming onto your home court, I've got a, I've, I've got a pretty good sense that Memphis is going to be excited about that. And finally, you don't know much about the non-conference schedule yet. Still working on that, but the one thing that has been released, and everyone's seen it on the, uh, the promo video at the Elmer Field Fieldhouse and FedEx Forum, Late November, and of course everyone loves it, we'll be going to Virgin Islands. Uh, now is that going to be a three-game deal down at the Virgin Islands? It will be a three-game deal, and actually there are two four-team pods, okay. so to speak. So we will play three individual games against our pod. We don't know who exactly is in what pod yet, but we do know that Duke is there. Yeah. We know that Kansas is there. We know that Central Michigan is there, which was a NCAA tournament team this year and a lot of very, very high-level teams. Your schedule right now is already uh, salty enough with the, with the conference and then those uh, non-conference games down, uh, down in the uh, Virgin Islands. That's a schedule if yeah. you've got five returning seniors and we've got <laughs> five returning sophomores. So, uh, we're, But we're excited about it. We will be exposed to a new level of basketball. Um, not so different than what we're exposed to with a Missouri here and Arkansas certainly in the WNIT and St. John's that we've had in the past, but um, it will be a new level of, of basketball and it's important that we recruit at that level. Um, it won't happen immediately. I, in many ways, I feel like I'm having the first interview with you five years ago <laughs> where we've got to now grow into mm -hmm. our new conference and it certainly is going to start with recruiting and the improvement of the current players that we have. All right, well, Coach, uh, it'll be a great challenge, a great opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks, Jeff. That is Melissa McFerrin. I'm Jeff Brightwell. This is the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.